Hey guys, Demir Bentley from Lifehack Bootcamp. This video is gonna be a tutorial on how to get started with screencasting, which I think is the secret weapon of productivity that everybody is gonna be talking about in five years and nobody is talking about right now. Now, we've actually done a whole video on what is screencasting, what are the benefits, all of that kind of stuff, so I'm not gonna to try to sell you on it. Go watch that video if you don't know what screencasting is and you don't know if it's for you and you don't know if you should be doing it. This video is just gonna be about how to get started screencasting and which app you should use. And it turns out that we've done all of the research and we've gone through all of the expensive, complicated ones and there's one that's actually free that is the best. And we're so stoked to show you that. Before we get started, if you like this kind of stuff, definitely subscribe to our channel. We're here to help freedom seekers get productive, get efficient and design the life they wanna live. So let's get started. The app that you need to be using to screencast is actually the last one that people think about because it's not actually a screencasting app. It's a video conferencing app and it's called Zoom. Guys, we have used so many of the screencasting apps out there. Some of them cost up to three, $400. Yes, we bought those. We tried them out, we didn't like them. And we settled on Zoom. What is Zoom? Zoom is a video conferencing app, sort of like Skype, but I think a lot better. We use it at Lifehack Bootcamp for all of our live video conferences. You could use it for that too. But actually we started using it for screencasting and we found that it had a ton of benefits over any other program out there. And we're gonna talk about what those are. Now, I'm not gonna go into every single benefit of Zoom versus everything else, but I'll just give you the highlights. Number one, it's free. Number two, the quality of the video is better, meaning it exports a higher quality video. And this is important, it has a smaller file size. I don't know what they're doing at Zoom, but they're able to get that file size down. Why does that matter? Because when you're uploading it to the web and then getting a link and sending it to somebody else, if it's two gigabytes, it's gonna take you like five hours to upload that video. And for some reason, Zoom is able to just get those files down real small. And there's a lot of other benefits and I won't go into those, but the last one I'll mention is that you can turn on your front facing camera, which means that not only can people see what's happening on the screen and hear your voice, they can also see you in a little box at the top right corner. Now, a lot of other apps will upcharge you for that ability, meaning you have to pay an extra hundred, two hundred dollars to get that ability. With Zoom, it's free. Okay, let's get into it. Let's go through all the steps that you need to take to download Zoom and get started with your first screencast right now during this video. So what I'm gonna have you do is come around my shoulder here and I'm gonna show you the screen, okay? So come on over. Okay, the first step is we're gonna to go to www.zoom.us forward slash download. And this is actually the direct link where you can download Zoom for your computer. Now it should sense whether you've got a PC or Mac. So when you see it, it should actually just be ready to download. So click download, open it and install it to your computer. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna open Zoom and it just opens a small little window here. So what you wanna do is you wanna click this one here with start with video. That's gonna start the meeting with your video on or you have an option to start the meeting with your video off. I typically film my screencasts with my video on so they can see my face and see what's happening in the screen. So I'm gonna click start with video. Now, because of the unique way that we need to shoot this video in order to see everything on the screen, I'm outside of the shot, but I'm still here, hello. So the first thing that you're gonna to wanna to do is decide what you're gonna to wanna to capture. So throughout the process of filming your screencast, if you wanna pop in and have them see your face in your video, you can turn it on or you can turn it off. The same with screen sharing. Step three, push record. Just go ahead and push record here and now you are officially recording. So they can see anything on your screen and anything on your video. Right now, that's neither because the video is not turned on and the screen sharing is not turned on. So we know how to turn on the video. We can simply click start video. Let's show you how to share your screen. So click down here at the very center of the screen. You'll see a green box with an arrow up. That allows you to share your screen. Now, the option it's defaulted to, and you can tell because it's green here, is desktop one, which means everything on that desktop will be visible. That means if you change to different applications or between different windows, everybody will be able to see what's on all of the different windows and applications. I think this is the easiest option. I recommend you use this. If you're a nerd, there's other options here as well. So feel free to investigate those. And all you have to do to start sharing your screen is click the blue share button at the bottom right hand corner of that screen. Now we are officially sharing the screen. They will not see this window. This window will be invisible, but you can also click it closed. Okay, so step five, you're now gonna wanna film your screencast. Now, 
screencasts are typically a step-by-step -step set of instructions of you walking through a process that would be really hard for somebody to understand, but becomes easy if they see you doing it yourself. So as an example here, we have an SOP, that's a standard operating procedure that we've created on how one of our new employees can create an account in LastPass. Now, if you don't know what LastPass is, don't worry about it. It's a password storage vault that me and my whole team use, and we can't live without it. Okay, here's my screencast. This is Demir. This is a screencast on how to create a LastPass account. First, go to www.lastpass.com and click get LastPass free. Put in your email and put in your master password and then push sign up, it's free. Once you're done with that process, it will give you a Chrome extension. Run that Chrome extension, open it up, put in your email and we're ready to go. Okay guys, I'm not gonna go through this whole process, but as you can see, it's very easy because they can see everything that's happening on your screen and everything that's happening with your voice, you're literally walking them through step by step. Now, I wanna highlight a couple things before I finish here. One is that it's really easy inside of Zoom to pause the recording. Now, not stop. Stop means you're done and it will render the file. I'm talking about pause the recording. So that means if you realize you've forgotten something or you just wanna hit pause, there's a pause option. Again, you can also start and stop the video, which means you have an option to have your video playing, which means your video will be locked up here in the top right-hand corner. So don't be doing anything up here because that's where your video will be. You can also turn it off and turn it on and turn it off, and as many times as you turn it off and on, it will show up. Another cool thing I like to do is sometimes I'll turn the video on and turn the screen share off, which means that I can just address the video directly head on. Okay, let's assume that you're done. You can actually stop the recording. There's a little stop button here, stop, and you're gonna wanna end meeting for all. There's a little red button down here that says end meeting. You're gonna wanna end the meeting, and I'll ask you, do you wanna end the meeting for all? Yes, you do, you wanna end meeting for all. Now notice it's starting to render the file. That's your next step, just wait. Don't do anything here, let it render the file. Now, when the file is rendered, it will open it directly to the place where it's stored. But if you ever get lost, you can always go back to documents, zoom, and then scroll down to the most recent one that puts it in order, and you'll see that's your file right there. Now it'll default to naming it something like zoom underscore zero dot mp4. So you're gonna wanna rename it. So I'm gonna name this one SOP how to sign up for LastPass. So let's double click it and check it. Here. And now, I was linked to Asana actually. Great, so that's perfect. It's recording my screen, it's recording my video and my audio. Now the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is upload it to Google Drive or Dropbox. And that's important because these files are too big to send over email or text. They're just too big. So you need to upload it to an online file storage system and then send the link from there. Now I'm saying you should use Google Drive or LastPass, but really any online document management system where you can send what we call a dead link. That's an open link where all they have to do from their phone or computer is click the link and it will play. No passwords, no fancy access, just an open link. So these services usually make it easy. You can just drag and drop. You'll see a little box here that says it's uploading my video. Wait for that to finish, and then we're gonna grab a link. Okay, here it is. Here's step nine. You're gonna wanna get an open link, not a closed link, an open link. And I'm gonna show you how to do that in Google Drive, but you can find out how to do it in any other document management system like Dropbox. In Google Drive, you just right click and click get shareable link. Now, you wanna go to sharing settings and making sure it's actually an open link. Usually you can tell because it says anyone with the link can edit or can view. But let's just go into your options so I can show you where you can make sure that this is right. Click anyone with the link and edit, click more, and this gives you all of the options that it could potentially default to. Often, I find that it defaults to anyone at Lifehack Bootcamp can, with the link can open, which means that anyone who's not in our organization cannot open it and that doesn't work for me. So what I do is I click anyone with the link and down here I say either can edit or can view, it doesn't matter. And then I say save and now it's the right link. So I double click that or I click copy link and voila, now we have an open link that we can put anywhere. So let me show you a couple ways you can use this open link. So I'm gonna send an email to myself and show you. So I'll create an email that says how to log into LastPass and I will drop this link. Now, quick tip for the pros, I like to double click the link and make sure that it's hyperlinked. 
that it's actually a hyperlink because you want to make sure they don't have to copy and paste it into a browser that they can simply click it. So I'm going to send that to myself and voila, there we go. How to log into LastPass? Let's check it and make sure it works. Somebody just has to click the link from a phone or a desktop. They can push play. This is a screencast on how to create a LastPass account. First, go to W. Perfect. That's exactly what you want to see. And by the way, it works just as well from your phone. Most people get links on their phone and they open them from the phone and this will work on the phone as well as the desktop. So it's so crucial. Now it works just as well in chat. I can put this link right into a chat box and push return and somebody can get that on their computer or inside of their phone and they can open it up and it will work just the same. Now we also use a project management platform called Asana. You can create a new Asana task and you can drop that right into the task and push create task and that person will have that easy to follow SOP video right there inside of the task. Okay, let's recap really quick. Step one, download Zoom. Step two, open an empty Zoom room with or without the video on. Push record and share your screen. Film your instructions step by step. And once this baby's going, go ahead and film whatever screencast your heart desires, step by step. Step six, stop the recording and end the meeting and end meeting for all. Step seven, wait for that to render on your computer. Perfect. Step eight, drag and drop it to your online document storage of choice. Step nine, right click and get the shareable link. Make sure it's an open link first and then go ahead and copy that link. And step 10, drop that link in an email, text, project management platform, anywhere you need to store the email and share it. It will share anywhere online. Okay guys, that's screencasting and it's really darn easy and the more that you do it, the easier it gets. This is the tool of the future. People always ask me, Demir, what's that tool that people are gonna be using in 10 years that we're not using today? And I always say screencasting. Here's my challenge to you. Go ahead, fire it up, and create your first screencast like right now, like a 10 second screencast, and just get yourself used to it. It's always the first screencast that makes people the most nervous. Once you've done it once, even just short, and just send yourself a little link, it will demystify the whole process. So I challenge you to do that right now. Okay guys, that's screencasting. If you like these videos, click subscribe.